Gonna meet my friends at a favorite spot just up the road ways Where everyone can find some company There's laughs and beers and a couple of cheers I'm living for Hey everybody, today we are at Pollyanna Brewing, and for those who don't know this, Pollyanna was very, very influential in getting me in the industry, so I owe them a lot, so I figured what the heck, we might as well do them first. I happen to be sitting with one of the best brewers, in my opinion, in the Chicagoland area, Brian, and how do you pronounce your last name? Pavola. Pavola, and I only say that because for the first six or eight months I kept calling him Pavola. <laughs> so, um, Brian, how, what got you into beer? Oh yeah, uh, I mean everyone's got their home brewing story, I mean I wanted to make beer for myself and my friends in college, but uh, what really got me into it is not liking my old job, it's kind of kind of the story that a lot of people have. What was your old job? Uh, I implemented software in hospitals, so I got yelled at by doctors and nurses pretty much every day, and eventually I didn't want to do that anymore. So. Uh, Decided to go to brewing school, and so that was about seven years ago at this point. So, did that, came back, and met my business partners, and we decided to open Pollyanna. And one thing I will add to that is I have a much different respect now going through the process myself with partners. So, I owe these guys a lot because I probably said and did some stuff that wasn't all that professional at times. But. <laughs> Hey, it's good to have good partners. Yes, for sure. So what made you guys decide on Lamont? Uh, so when we were looking, it was about six years ago, and at that point, there was vacancy in the area uh, for craft beer, and now there's breweries everywhere. Um, but we looked in Lamont. We liked the city. We liked the Old Town feel. Uh, we looked in a couple other spots, but Lamont just kept standing out as the place to be. Uh, and then we found this building, Actually, my partner Paul found this building while he was next door at the veterinarian. And he walked in and instantly fell in love and he showed it to us and we decided that this was gonna be the spot. It is definitely a cool location. Uh, obviously, when I came and worked with you guys, it was when you had Roselle opening up and now you have St. Charles. What is the theme be, uh, gonna be at St. Charles? Without giving it away too much, it's gonna be a, a spirited. Uh, but we were making beer there as well. Um, it's a bigger tap room. It's a lot more music and entertainment focused. Uh, it's right downtown, right on the river, so it's a beautiful spot. And it's our biggest tap room yet, so it's quite a bit of work. But uh, we're hoping that we can create something pretty special in a, a town that is uh, near and dear to us as well. My, one of my business partners, Ryan, is from the St. Charles area. And yeah. before we even opened in Lamont, he always said, Someday we're going to be here. And <laughs> he was right. He was right. Yeah. What are some of the challenges you have now having three locations? Sure. I mean, splitting time between them is tough. Uh, making sure that the brand is equally represented at all three is always a challenge. Uh, we have over 50 employees now, which in itself presents a challenge. Uh, just trying to keep everybody on the same page, make sure that information is getting spread um, accurately is always important but we have some really good managers and employees that do a fantastic job for us in maintaining brand consistency and making sure that that beer is poured properly and deliciously every time. Yes, I agree with that. So one of the beers I really enjoyed, uh, and I still do to this day, is your Fruhoff. When you're developing a beer, like what do you, look and be like, oh, hey, we need to do this or that. Like, how do you, how do you research making a beer, whether it's Fruhoff or Arenda or any of those? Sure. Um, well, it, it usually starts with what have I had before that tastes similar to this style. So when I was tasked with making an Oktoberfest, I went to other Oktoberfests that I've tried. And uh, when you're drinking that beer, you kind of just assess like how it tastes and smells and and then in my head you just go back and do it here in the brewery. Uh, so it's, it's taking a lot of other beers that influence uh, what I like to drink and then just kind of making it our own after that. 
So I know when you guys first opened, you were you know brewing solely on your own, correct? Yeah. So now I know you have a couple of assistants. How how has that changed your personality, or how has that changed how you look forward at beers? <laughs> uh, I can relax a little bit more. <laughs> um, ha having a solid crew that makes consistent beer and represents Pollyanna well is uh, you can't ask for anything better than that. So. Yeah, I mean, having them around and making great beer is is awesome. I mean, I don't I don't make most of the beer these days. Yeah, uh, I'm just kind of overseeing everything and making sure that everything's on time and we we have deliveries that need to get out. I, it's my job to make sure that they do. So, so one question I've been asked a couple times from when I worked with you guys, and even you know recently, I'll run into someone and you know I I talk about Pollyanna quite often. They're always like. How can Brian brew, brew such good beer and not have a beard? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I just always thought the, a beard on me just didn't work. Yeah. Have you ever had one? I did. I had one in college, and it was, uh, it was fine. We'll I, I'm not saying I can't grow a beard. I can right. grow a beard. But we'll just... have to research and try to find a picture of that. <laughs> They're out there somewhere. That would be worthy. Um, and on a personal level, I don't want to get real personal, but uh, you just had a baby a while ago. Sure did, yeah. So I'm sure having some assistance and a bigger team to work with helps you at home as well. For sure. And uh, I got to take a little time off to spend time with him and my wife and didn't worry for one minute that the brewery was going to be heading in the wrong direction. I knew that everything was fine and all I had to do was check in. Yeah, that was key. I'm still a little butthurt that you didn't name him Jay, but that's okay. <laughs> that's a whole other story for another time. <laughs> it was debated that his middle name would be Jay, but it, it ended up being my name, which I guess that's is acceptable. the way to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another thing I'm sure a lot of people would like to know is, you know, Pollyanna has obviously gotten pretty big. About how many barrels are you guys brewing a year now? Uh, last year we hit the 4,000 number. So uh, for us, that's a pretty big number. I mean, it's not the biggest in the country by far, not even the state. I don't even think we're top 10 in the state, but um, yeah, we do, that was without St. Charles. So this year we're fully expecting to be at about 5,000 just to support that brewery as well. Um, yeah. Well, and one thing I noticed, you know, a couple of years ago is you guys were one of the first breweries in uh, White Sox Park. I don't know what it's called. It was Comiskey, will always be Comiskey me, but how did you guys get in there? Well, actually, the, the it's all about relationships. <laughs> yeah. um, the buyer at the time, he lived, or he was from around Lamont, and he would come into our bar, and he just happened to like what he saw, and he asked us if we wanted to sell beer at White Sox Park, so he said, sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely a good deal there. When you guys, when you're, you know, debating on doing something different, um, for instance, like a collaboration, how do you go about, hey, let's do a collab with whoever? How do you guys determine who you might do one with? I mean, it's usually people that we're familiar with, or um, if we don't know them too well, it's somebody that we respect. Uh, we don't have too much time for collabs these days, uh, but we do have one coming up that we're pretty excited about with Revolution, which is uh, going to be pretty fun. It'll be a Sabro hopped. Hopfenweiss, so it's uh, something that not a lot of people are probably familiar with, but we're both right. pretty excited about it. That is really cool. I did not know that. Um, how, how did that come about? I mean, you have friends in the industry that you, like, how do you get into Revolution? Because obviously they're, the, <laughs> they're one of the hardest ones to get to. Again, it's relationships. Yeah. Uh, Jim and I did a tasting panel on American lagers a few years ago with the Tribune, and we've kept in touch since then. And uh, another one of our brewers happened to be in the area and dropped some beer off a few months back and just chatted their ear off until they finally said, sure, we'll do a collab with you. So, um, so yeah, we're pretty excited. We just locked that in last week, and they're going to come out here and make some beer with us. It'll be, a, it'll be fun. So people come around the corner, they, or they pull in the parking lot, and they see Pollyanna Brewing, and they've never been here before. What are they going to expect when they walk in? Well, someone new to our brewery uh, hopefully will be greeted with a friendly welcome. Uh, customer service has always been important to us. That's part of uh, why we have been successful to this point. Um, but the atmosphere is something that is unlike any other brewery here. Uh, you walk in and you see, feel, smell everything in the air. Uh, you can see us working. There's no wall in between. It's just a 
a wedge and a and then there's brewing equipment down there. So uh, the first impression is uh, something that we really thought was important when we came into this building in particular. Uh, and then the beer menu is something that we've always focused on is keeping something for everybody on that right. list. Uh, we don't focus necessarily on the newest trendy style. Uh, obviously we do some of that, but we have anything from fruity to lager to pastry to hazy to anything in between. And um, I think the diversity in our menu is something that's been very approachable for somebody new and experienced in beer at the same time. So uh, somebody new coming in here can not know what they're looking for. They can know exactly what they're looking for and they'll probably get whatever that is. Key is definitely having the uh, personnel behind the bar uh, welcoming people in and then talking about the actual product and knowing it. Uh, I know when I was at, the, at Roselle, uh, I think we did a good job there with presenting it the same way. You gotta have a good face, a smile, hi, touch the tables, get around, let everyone know, hey, you got any questions, we're here to answer them. For sure. I mean, the beer can be the best beer in the world, but if that person has a terrible experience, they're never coming back. What styles, I know there's a lot of styles, like, I, you know, everyone has their favorite style. What is your favorite style and, you know, anything upcoming that you think is going to be hot or cold or whatever? Sure. Uh, I mean, my favorite styles are always lagers, and it's what I went to school to learn how to do. Um, but the one beer that really, really just screams Pollyanna is uh, not something that I thought would be something we were ever going to make, but it's actually our raspberry wheat beer, Summerly. And we sell and make more of that than any beer I thought we'd ever make. So That beer is one of my favorites. It is, in my opinion, what landed me the job with Pollyanna. Because <laughs> Paul came into one of my previous jobs and said, what's your favorite beer on tap? And I said, pardon my words, but I said, Summerly, that shit's like crack cocaine. <laughs> and to this day, I still drink that stuff. It's an awesome beer. So. Who would ever thought a 4% pink beer would be uh, the best-selling beer at Pollyanna, but... It is. <laughs> well, Brian, it was great seeing you again. And yeah, you too. We'll talk again soon. Thanks, Jay. Today, I'm here at Orange and Brew with the owner, Eric. We're checking out his bottle shop here in Downers Grove. Uh, one of the things Downers Grove has been known for, whether you know this or not, is they have approximately 200 Sears built houses. Um, being by the train tracks, they were able to deliver a bunch of them. And back in the, from 1910 to 1940, they built about 200 of them. We're not in a Sears house now, we're in a bottle shop, which is a much better place to be. Um, so Eric, how did you get your start? What gave you the idea to come in and do this? This might have been a Sears house at one point, <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Uh, you know, the idea, uh, when I was in college, I worked in bars, managed bars, uh, worked in uh, hospitality after college to pay off student loans and things like that. So it's kind of something I got into another career. My wife and I always joked that it'd be cool to get back to this at some point. And so a lot of different reasons. Uh, we had moved a couple years ago. The job I had at the time I had, it was on a contract and it was running out and uh, there were no bottle shops down this way. We moved down in this area. Uh, I used to go to places like Beer Cellar and Iron and Glass and uh, we were just a little too far away from those places. So I thought, you know what, all signs are kind of pointing towards let's make this happen now and uh, <laughs> about two years of work and here we are finally. We just celebrated our first anniversary. Well, congrats on that. Um, one of the things I always liked about the bottle shops is you can come somewhere like this and you have eight handles on um, and I know you also have your meads ready to go and coming here it's like, hey, I can't make it to Pollyanna or I can't make it to um, Buckle Down or wherever. I can come here, there's eight different ones on handle and then there's a ton on the shelves. Really unique feature that I personally think is not where the beer scene is going, but an attribute to this area since we can't all make it to all the other breweries. So, uh. yeah, I was going to say, you know, I was going to add to that that our biggest goal is to get people to go to breweries to learn more about craft beer. So, if I can have uh, in this area, we have a lot of younger families, they've got kids, they can't get out and do like six breweries in a day, right? right? So whatever their sitter allows is what they're gonna do. They have to be very careful about where they go. So if they can try something here, say, hey, I really like this bar or this brewery, I really like this beer, I wanna go try more. Well, they get a chance to try it here and it helps them kind of narrow some things down that way. What 
what right now is the like number one seller as far as styles of beer? Style is, it, it's the hazy for sure right now. So again, we were talking about all the different beers and the different styles every week or the different beers itself, different cans. And yeah, that's the one that people are really looking for. And uh, uh, there's no, I can't, I can't, there's not even a close second right now. What, uh, do you have any predictions on how it's going to move for the next year? You know, I don't think hazies are going anywhere, but I'm starting to see the West Coast, Midwest style IPAs, like the traditional bitter type beers, starting to come back a little bit. So that's good. We didn't move a whole lot of that last year. I'm starting to see that move. And everybody keeps predicting lagers and pilsner, as they were saying that last year. Uh, they're still relatively popular with a certain drinker, uh, especially brewers. <laughs> uh, but um, th it's pre been pretty level for us. Yeah, the lagers are definitely one. The brewers, when they go somewhere, that's going to be the first beer they try. You can't hide a bad beer in a lager, but you can kind of hide a bad beer with an adjunct adding to it. So um, when you were looking for a place, what made you decide on Downers? You know, we wanted to be within about 20 minutes of where we lived. Um, the train tracks were a plus, uh, and then obviously uh, parking and rent were some of the other things we were looking at. And, you know, I went through a lot of things with the business plan. Uh, I'd have to recommend if anybody's ever looking to open a small business, College of DuPage has a small business development area, so I'm going to give them a, a quick plug. Everything's free. They have advisors. They give you classes. And so I got a lot of the things for looking at demographics and figuring out how many beer drinkers are in the area and how do we start to extrapolate some of these numbers and make it figure out is this really a good place to be so uh we, we really went through a process it, it took quite a while so touching on the business of craft beer which is the program at cod uh, that's a program i went through i recommend it all the time and i'm definitely every chance i get i plug it because they what they're doing is helping the you know the person who might have been a school teacher the person who might have been a janitor the person who might have been whatever you can go to college dupage take these six classes and you come out with a certificate that will land you a job at a brewery um, and it gives you the knowledge you need to know about beer if you go through the whole program you actually come out with a cicerone so that's me plugging them because it is such a good program they have there yeah it is great i know those guys are, are doing a really nice job of it yeah like what's your next big event that's coming up uh, you know what, I'll, I'll give a, a call. The one thing that we're going to do every year for sure is um, my wife lost her dad to brain cancer several years ago. So it's still something that uh, is meaningful to both of us. So every year in May, which is Brain Cancer Awareness Month, we're going to go ahead and do an event that benefits a family that either is or has had to go through some of the same things that her family did. So we're, uh, this year it will be the first week in May. Uh, I don't know if it'll always be the first week in May, just think it depends how things go, but that's going to be an annual thing we're going to do. We'll do special tap list. It's meaningful to uh, things that her dad did. Like, for instance, we'll, we don't bring imports in here very often, but we'll put a German lager on because he was stationed in Germany during right. Vietnam. So everything we have on that weekend will have some sort of meaning. And then, uh, again, portion of proceeds all weekend, and then it'll culminate in uh, a Sunday bottle share. Basically. Have you decided what weekend that is? That'll be this year. It's the first weekend of May. I can't think of the actual dates. Okay, the first weekend of May. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Obviously, when you, you know, decided you were going to do Downers Grove, how was it working with the village? You know, the village was actually really good to work with. Um, I'm going to tell, they're, they're, I haven't, I'm going to tell you something I haven't told the mayor himself, but um, a lot of people warned us that it was going to be really difficult to work with these guys. But I think um, some of the trustees have turned over some of the administration here. So um, that's a huge thing if somebody really wants to get into this business, whether, and you know, whether you want to open a brewery or you want to open a bottle shop or a bar or a liquor store. Uh, that's a big hurdle to jump sometimes. And honestly, the village here is very open to experiences. And once we uh, educated them on what the shop actually was, we weren't just going to be a bar that was going to be open till 3 o'clock in the morning every day. We weren't going to open at 5 a.m. to serve train beers, everybody getting on the train. Once they realized we were going to be responsible, we are going to create experiences and events and family-friendly type things, um, they were very much on board, very supportive, and uh, really helped as much as they could to get us going. And obviously, you don't have a kitchen, and uh, you know most breweries, not most, a large portion of the breweries in Chicago don't have kitchens, so they always suggest bringing outside food, or a lot of times they have a place next door, two doors down. Uh, how do you guys approach that? You know, same way. I really approach this as looking at like a brewery. That was really the model I looked at uh, a lot without having the brewing experience. So I was going to go ahead and do that. 
Um, but when we went in front of even the Liquor Commission here, we said, listen, our goal is to bring more business incrementally to the other businesses around us. There's a ton of restaurants in Downers Grove, a lot of really good ones here downtown. And so while we our license requires us to have some food, we have a couple of prepackaged things available for somebody who wants to grab something here. We really encourage people to either order out, bring food in. Uh, we have an uh, agreement with Second Kitchen, which is a company that uh, you may know that partners with bars and breweries and restaurants. So we have our own menu with a place called Glock and Talk, a great taco place up the street. And um, you order it on your phone, you pay on your phone, they deliver it right to your table, with free delivery. So that's kind of how we're trying to approach it. Um, and we've got a great relationship with a lot of the restaurants around us. So they send us, uh, you know, their overflow when they're busy and their bars are jammed. People will come here and wait and the bars will send them their texts that their tables are ready. And, you know, in turn, we do the same thing. Hey, go grab some food over there and come back or yeah. hey, order out or pick something up and bring it over here. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so a lot of breweries also have like membership benefits. Do you guys have anything like that? We do. We have something called the draft class that goes back to my sports background. So I'm kind of turning it into a, a NBA draft, so, so to speak. But it was a limited group. Uh, we kind of took some of the Pollyanna model, ironically. So the bigger pints for, you know, when you get a pint, it's a 20 ounce pour of a reasonably alcohol beer. Um, and then, you know, they get uh, a koozie, they get uh, entered into raffles so that we have a member of the month who we were just talking about some of the hot beers and how people are really going after them. So if you're a member of the month, we will put some beer aside for you so you don't have to rush in here. You have a week to pick it up. So, um, and we have a, a plaque on the wall too to, to honor some of those folks. So uh, the first, we have two levels of it. The higher level actually sold out super fast. Uh, we still have a couple memberships for the other one if anybody's interested. If a person's walking down the street, they look in your window and they're like, oh, I wanna go check this place out. What can they expect when they come in? Hopefully uh, a warm greeting and uh, some cold beer. But um, honestly, the, the uh, culture that we're trying to establish here, people joke that it's like cheers. So we really try to get to know the people that come in here. We have a lot of regulars that come in. Uh, I may not be great with names all the time, but with faces, I think I'm pretty good. I think all of our bartenders are great about making people feel welcome. So I, I, hopefully the second time you come in, we'll recognize you and be like, hey, welcome back. Thanks for coming in. So, and uh, I want to give a shout out to the culture of the people who actually come in here. So we can try to establish anything we want, but at the end of the day, it's about the people who actually come in, right? right. And so if you got a bunch of jerks, it doesn't really matter how we are right. when we're behind the bar or anybody working here. It, it has to do with the people who are in here. And, and we have some of our members in particular who are in here a lot. I mean, they are just, <laughs> You will sit here during the day and we'll have six people sitting here at the bar who none of them have ever met each other before they walk in the door. And all of a sudden they're all exchanging uh, emails and they're all Facebook friending each other. I mean, the culture that some of our regulars have helped establish here is something I've, I don't think I've ever seen in this industry. Right, and I would agree with that. The number of times I've been in here, I've become friends with regulars that, you know, I would have never met them if I didn't come into the, your establishment. I totally agree with that. The atmosphere is definitely dictated by the customers, but you also have to have a certain staff that are gonna bring that atmosphere as well. Um, I'm sure you did a great job with who you're hiring, because like I said, every time I've been in here, pleasant smile on their face, a welcome, hey, how you doing? Not all of them remember me, but most remember my face. It's definitely a welcoming environment for sure.